Now, eventually, one of the things that happened along the lines of, of this was, how do we keep all this secret? <laughs> well, wet works kill people. Compartmentalization, unacknowledged special access projects, nobody outside the project knows. A big one is ridicule. I have a document from 1950s where they talk about engaging Disney Studios, which had done a lot of the OSS propaganda films in World War II. And Walt Disney was an asset of the CIA. And believe it or not, I mean, everyone thinks of cartoons. But, so they, they were going to, they engaged Disney Studios to make Flying Saucer and Little Green Men films. You know, you know ha, ha, ha. And it ridiculed the subject so that respectable people would say, well, you're a kook if you're dealing with UFOs and ET issue. And that was done deliberately. And this was part of what I referred to in that earlier document, the psychological warfare value of the subject. How do you create the psychological nexus so that the subject becomes subject non grata? Like a person non, persona non grata. It's a subject non grata. Uh, it, it's unwelcome. It's, it has ridicule associated with it. And an Air Force major told me, who's one of our disclosure project witnesses who uh, was present when we shot and killed an ET on the tarmac at McGuire Field there in New Jersey. His testimony is quite riveting if you've read the materials. Um, and you know, he was saying, look, the, really the way this has been kept secret more than anything is just sheer ridicule. Nobody wants to be laughed at. Everyone doesn't, everyone's concerned what their friends might think. Because, you know, where's the tinfoil hat you're supposed to be wearing? So this ridicule got ramped up in 1953, in the psychological warfare programs. So by the time, you know, we came on the stage, gee, we're 60 some, you know, 50, 60 years into a hole of ridicule and denial and uh, countermeasures and everything else that, how do you fix this? You know, it's very difficult because most reporters and media people don't want to be ridiculed. Um, nor do scientific and people and professors and government folks. I mean, there's so many people in the Congress I've met with, very interested, know this is real. I'll say, will you hold a hearing on this? They go, oh no, it'd be the end of my career. I'd be, I'd be the laughing stock. I'd be Senator Moonbeam or Congressman, you know, tinfoil head or whatever. So that ridicule, which was ramped up in the 50s, has been very effective, incredibly effective. Um, and, and that's one of the hard problems I've faced as well. Although, you know, as a medical doctor, luckily I was known as a very good emergency doctor before I got on Larry King Live and started doing stuff like this. But um, if it had been the other way around, I probably would have never been hired. Um, really, yeah, so <laughs> I, was, I was careful in my timing because I did have a family of four children to support. Um, Luckily, they're all out of college now, so. 